everyone, Katrina Latrice Williams here. I am so blessed and excited to be living. 2018 is January 1st and God is awesome. Praises to the Most High for allowing me to make it through the year of 2017. A year of challenges, health challenges, a year of struggles, aches, pains, and things that you couldn't even imagine of that I've been through. But I wanted to share my inspiration today. I wanted to be transparent to everyone today. As you all can see, right here is what you're seeing is the hair loss from chemotherapy. I'm not shamed because I know that through my healing, I'm going to be able to inspire so many to let you know that God have the last say so in everything. Don't be ashamed of what you're going through in life because we all go through something. It's just a matter of how you handle it. And how I'm handling my hair loss, <laughs> I have turbans, I have beautiful scarves, and all type of things to cover my hair as I end up losing all of it. But you know, God is good. And instead of me being upset, um, angry, or shame, I'd rather be full of love, joy, peace, kindness, just full of the fruit of the Spirit. But today, I wanted to come to you all. Um, it's a new season, it's a time for new beginnings, and it's a new year. And I wanted to start the year off full of inspiration and to encourage somebody. I want to be able to touch somebody today even if it's one soul, to let them know the ways that we can actually live right by God. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a saint. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But I've been studying the Ten Commandments for a while because it's important for me to know how God is really, truly blessing me and my life and others. And God want to bless you. It's just a matter of us doing right by God. It doesn't take a lot, and you can come as you are. You know, some people say, oh, man, I got to make sure I'm right before I get close with God. But God wants you to come as you are. Um, you all may see the scar. Uh, this is actually my pick line for uh, me receiving chemotherapy. Instead of them sticking me in my arms and wrists and stuff, they stick that the pick line here and get the blood and everything that they need because when I went through chemotherapy and, and radiation as a baby um, you all may see the scars here different things it really ruined a lot of my veins and so now if they try to take blood from me I only have one good arm they will only get drops and you know specks of blood but I have my Bible with me. So before I start talking about the Ten Commandments, I want to pray. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come together. You said when two and three are gathered together, there you are in the midst. And Lord, we ask that you give us the wisdom, knowledge, and revelation on understanding your Ten Commandments, your laws and, and statutes on how to live right by you here on earth. Lord, we know that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And we thank you so much for giving us life. We thank you for creating us in your image. And Lord, we know that we have dominion over the earth. And we ask that you just continue to guide us down the path of righteousness. Lord, we want to trust in you and all that we do and lean not to our own understanding. Protect us with the full armor of God and so that we can stand firm against all strategies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. So, like I said, I've been studying the Ten Commandments and I just wanted to break down my understanding of what the Ten Commandments are. Now, first and foremost, you can find the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 and it starts at 1. I'm going to read the Ten Commandments first, and then I'm going to break down my understanding of the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 and 1. Then God instructed the people as follows. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in Egypt. Do not worship any other gods beside me. Do not make idols of any kind, whether in the shape of birds or animals or fish. You must never worship or bow down to them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not share your 
affection with any other God. I do not leave unpunished the sins of those who hate me, but I punish the children for the sins of their purposes to the third and fourth generation. But I lavish my love on those who love me and obey my commands, even for a thousand generations. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, six days a week and set apart for your daily duties and regular work. But the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any kind of work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. Then he rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it as holy. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God will give you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house, do not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, or ox or donkey or anything else your neighbor owns. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the horn, and when they saw the lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at the distance, trembling with fear. And they said to Moses, You tell us what God says, and we will listen. But don't let God speak directly to us. If he does, we will die. So that is Exodus 20, verse 1 through 18. Now, my understanding of the Ten Commandments. Number one, I am the Lord your God who removed you from slavery. Basically, the Lord is reminding us that we was in slavery at one time. So you have to be careful of the things that you do so that you don't fall back into slavery. Now, currently, I feel like many of us are in the modern day Babylon like we have been put back into exile because many of us have not been following the Lord's commandments including myself um, it may be that we haven't followed all of them or some of them but we're all guilty but at the same time we can ask for forgiveness we can repent our sins and we can start applying the commandments in our lives every day number two do not idle other gods now, in the Bible, we all tend to think that idling other gods is just, you know, the gods that they used to worship. Ra and Horus and Set and, you know, all the, the, the god of water, the god of earth, the god of land or whatever the other gods that was back in the day. But see, we're in modern day today. We're in the 21st century. You don't find people really worshiping things like that so it's new gods out here first of all the days of the week worship certain gods you can do your own research on that so we have to be careful with worshiping those days oh i love friday oh i love tuesday you know different things like that we have to be careful nowadays idling things could be love for example let's say you may find your pet and a stranger um, drowning or in danger. Somebody that truly loved their pet may go after saving their pet life before they save another human life. That is the sign of idling love, another God. Education. You know, people, they may be highly educated and they may end up doing things that are not of God, that's evil, because they're so intelligent and they turn it to evil. That's idling the, the God of education. Flags, you know, people are very big on patriotism. And they will, it, I mean, we've seen it this year alone, well, last year, with, you know, all the commotion and corruption on idling the flag and bending down and bowing down to it. That's idling another God. It's just a flag. Your country, pets, Facebook, work, money. 
there's so many different things that you can idle and I am definitely um, guilty of idling other guys because I idled work and I idled money and I had to ask for forgiveness you know that I was actually idling those things because it was times where I was working seven days a week not necessarily working um, laboring seven days a week of me having my cleaning business I had network marketing I had all type of other business work at home businesses and it felt like the days that I was off I still needed to do something because with a laptop you can do anything so seven days a week I was literally working not giving myself rest um, the third commandment do not misuse or carry the Lord's name in vain well that means do not commit evil in God's name a lot of times we find religious people committing evil in God's name um, they would torture or murder or bomb you know in God's name and that is um, using the Lord's name in vain number four remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy like I said I was working seven days a week so I basically was still a slave to work I was a slave to money because I felt like I needed to work very very hard in order to make money but that is not the case because if you have God by your side and you do the right things you don't necessarily have to work hard it's all a matter of working smart and doing the right things in life and I'm so excited about the different opportunities and the different resources that I have come across that is allowing my money to increase I'm thankful for my GoFundMe everyone that has donated to me during my um, trying times and me you know working on getting healthier and, and curing um, and I bind the cancerous cells out of my body I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus but I, you definitely want to remember the Sabbath day the Sabbath day is not working seven days a week the Lord worked six days and he at least had one day to rest and we have to make sure we do that and also understanding what the real Sabbath day is which is Saturday not Sunday and you can do your own research on that number five honor and obey your mother I am definitely uh, guilty of that I had to pray for that as well because it, I was working so much at one point in time I wasn't talking to my mom um, for you know days or a week at a time and that is not honoring your mother and father um, another way of you're not honoring your mother and father is not listening to them being disrespectful nowadays you know the new generation they want their children to look at them as peers and not parents they want to be friends instead of parents they want the love but they don't want the honor and it's very important you know the state has really caused a lot of uh, confusion in the home where children feel like they can call on the police on their parents but you know we have to get back to the real laws and commandments of God and that's honoring your mother and father and if it's if, if you're not doing something right then you need to understand and respect your mother and father now um, to my understanding the second half of the commandments is more of the treatment of your fellow human beings and number six commandment is do not murder now a lot of times in the Bible you find do not kill but I to my understanding do not kill well kill means it could mean immoral moral legal illegal taking of a life of an animal or a human being now you can kill someone in self-defense well you was protecting your life but murder is basically taking a life an innocent life illegally and immorally taking of a human being life that's innocent and that is where murder comes in and that is what you do not want do not murder number seven do not commit adultery now do not commit adultery is basically a married person having sexual relations with any other person besides their spouse it threatens the building blocks of the family without a family the social stability is impossible 
passing on family values from generation to generation is impossible. Um, the being committed to the family helps the man um, more responsible and mature. The family also meets the woman's emotional and material needs. And for the children, it helps secure and stabilize their childhood. So that is why it's important not to commit adultery. It's just not, oh, okay, I just, I'm not happy or they don't make me happy. It's all about the family. It's all about keeping the family together. It's all about keeping the generation in, um, you know, intact for God. Number eight, do not steal. Do not take anything that belongs to another person. Don't steal a human being. Um, don't kidnap human beings and sell into slavery, which is considered indentured servitude, um, sanctity of a, per a person's property, totalitarian re um, regime takes away private property rights, which results in theft of property, freedom, and life. Stealing a person's reputation, you don't, you don't want to steal a person's reputation because it can never be fully restored. Don't steal a person's dignity, which is mean humility in the public or shaming or embarrassing someone. Don't steal a person's trust, deceiving someone, lying to them, trying to trick them to buy something or to do something for you. Um... Intellectual property, copying, stealing, you know, stealing a life, spouse, property, all of that, it falls under do not steal. Number nine, do not bear false witness, meaning don't lie when testifying in court. Do not lie, um, period. Without justice, there's no civilization. So if everybody continue to lie, there's no truth and the truth will set you free. Um, lying on behalf of a good cause, period. Um, number 10, do not covet anything that belongs to others. This law actually legislates thoughts, which is different from all the other laws. Um, it prohibits the things that leads to murder, stealing, perjury, adultery. Coveting leads to evil to the point to where you... You know, if someone wants to take away and own something that belongs to another person instead of working hard for themselves, instead of being inspired to go out and get their own, that's all part of do not covet. Those are the Ten Commandments that the Lord created when Moses saved the people out of Egypt and led them to a land flowing with milk and honey. We have to get back to the basics. Because that is what's going to save our souls and our spirit. It is time for us to get close with God. Because we're at the end times. There's famine in the land. There's disease and, and, and sickness in the land. There's bearing false witness. There's false prophets out here. And there's wars. We are at all four of the horsemen. In books of Revelation. We have to get our life right. I'm not forcing you to do anything, but I pray that you do accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and just repent your sins. And as easy as you saying, I repent my sins, Lord. Thank you so, so much for allowing your son to die on the cross. And thank you that I am accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Will save your life, your soul, and your spirit. And lastly, I just wanted to share a quick prayer for those of you that have been closely connected to soul ties. I wanted to share this quick prayer um, to help break soul ties for you. It is it's very important to first remove the trash. Be, you know, there could be bitterness and lust and rejection and strife and doubt, envy, jealousy, fear, perversion, addiction, anger. Those are things that um, pretty much is showing you soul ties that um, can keep you from living a life of freedom and love and joy and living in the fruit of the Spirit. So here we go. Father, 
as an act of my will, I decree and declare that I do not want any darkness in my soul. No fear, no worry, no anger, no offense, no pride, no bitterness, no doubt, no addiction, no lust, no unforgiveness, no jealousy, no envy, no drunkenness, no strife, nothing of the enemy. As an act of my will, I loose these things from my soul in Jesus' name. Father, I want my soul to be whole and complete. I call back all parts of my soul that I gave away. Any part of my soul that I gave to sin, I call back now in Jesus' name. Any part that I gave away that is outside of God's will, I call back now. Any part of my soul that is under the influence of darkness, I call back now in Jesus' name. Father, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill my soul with your light, your love, your goodness, the fruit of the Spirit, your glory, your wisdom, your righteousness. I pray for your grace, your great abundant and sufficient grace. I choose to bind my soul with Jesus Christ and be one with God. Father, please fill me with your kingdom and your spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If this helped you today, definitely like my um, video. Share it with those that can use it. May God bless you in the new year with prosperity, love, peace, joy, and kindness. Amen.